In this video, I want to talk about um, the homeworks and the quizzes and the exams and kind of like what the settings are and uh, what to expect. Um, as well as, I should say, um, as well as the um, uh, readings. Okay, so again, you'd be logging into La Lima and you'll see our general site here. So everything you're going to do through MH Campus. Clicking on that, again, the very first time you do it, it's going to ask you to log in with your MH McGraw-Hill login and password. If you have one already from a different course, put that in. If you have not made one yet, use your UH email address and you'll create your login and password and then it'll link. Then you hit this little connect box right here. <clears throat> And again, what you do in the publisher site is quite a bit. You know, you're paying about 70 some bucks for this, so you should be using it a lot, and we are. Um, sadly, I, in my opinion, we're using it because La Lima is pretty bad. Um, we can't really do very much with it. And UH is gonna be changing, it's just that they haven't changed it yet, unfortunately. Um, so let's just change to student view here temporarily, and then I'm gonna go back to instructor view. Um, so, here's what you all see, right? You see the, the readings, you see the practice questions, the graded assignments. You also see like kind of like the whole textbook here. Um, now, the textbook itself is pretty cool, cool in the sense that, let's get out of, let's get out of this view here so I can actually click on things. My view is going to look a little bit different than yours, but you'll get the idea. Okay, so when I click on the reading, right, which looks like a book that's open, right, a book that's open here, you will click, right, launch the reading assignment. So again, it's not graded, so I'm not really checking whether you're doing it or not. But for those of you who do like reading a book, in this case an online book, um, this is pretty useful because what you can do is you can um, kind of create text and uh, you can create, you can highlight things in it. You can um, have it be read to you, um, right? And so you can do all these kinds of things here, right? Like I can do this and I don't know, highlight it, annotate it, um, make a like a bookmark for it, add a note, have it read to me, right? All these kinds of things. And the book is not badly written, and I understand everyone hates reading, although I'm not sure why. Um, right, but, you know, not really my job to make you read things that you should be reading. Um, I, I think you should read it, but, and I think this class is a lot harder if you don't read it, but I look at the statistics that it does collect for me, and people aren't reading it but it is actually really useful to read. And the people who do do well um, are the ones who do read it for whatever that's worth. Okay, so again, I, I, this is optional, the reading assignments, but I would strongly, strongly encourage you to do that. Then we've got the assignments, right? So now you see here practice questions and graded assignment. So the practice questions, these are just kind of like extra questions that, you know, there's absolutely, these, this is kind of designed for people that like wanted to do, <clears throat> um, wanted more questions than I was providing in just the graded assignment. And so these aren't worth anything, they're just free for you to do. Then let's look at the graded assignment. So there's a graded assignment for each chapter. <clears throat> that would mean that there are 13 chapters that we are covering. And they, generally speaking, have about 10 questions, and they're always worth 100 points total. And in this case, um, let, let's just look at the policies, because the policies are important. You'll see here again that it's due on the 20, right? You've got the two-week, um, you've got the two-week time period. And um, you... 
Um, how is the easiest way to show you this? It's better. So it's due on the 21st. Um, I'm not sure why I didn't put it here. But then generally speaking, I'm giving you a two-day additional for it accepting late submissions with each hour that it's late being it reducing it by 2%. So you, you know, let's just say you haven't you didn't plan your time right. You started on the twenty first. You didn't finish it on time, and you finish it at like three a.m. on the twenty second. Well, right. I mean, rather than it not being accepted at all, you'll just have a slight small penalty of two percent for each hour that it's late. Now, there's no proctoring for the homework assignments, and for a homework assignment, you have no time limit. You can print things, and I'm totally okay with that. Um, and you do have an unlimited number of attempts. So meaning, if you don't get the score you like, just do the whole assignment over again to get a higher score. <clears throat> Should be letting you look at the ebook and all those kinds of things um, as well. And um, after you do it, um, it should tell you what you got correct and not correct. And after you get 100%, it'll give you the detailed feedback for things. Okay, so that's the, um, <clears throat> the homework assignments. Now, new to me to doing this, uh, I don't know, I've been teaching online now, f well, I mean, ever since I started at UH, I started teaching online, but obviously with COVID, um, it's increased dramatically. And, well, I mean, we have a, a problem. The problem is that quizzes and exams, I mean, to some extent, right, I can't stop you really from, um, you know, having your notes open or things like that. But obviously people who take this class in person don't have that option. So I have to employ some degree of proctoring um, in order to level things out between the in-person sections of this class and the online sections of this class. So let's talk about what the proctoring is. So the, before you start any of these, right, to get through all the kind of whatever technical challenges of what everyone's using you'll want to go to this sample quiz where the sample quiz has all of the proctoring um, variables so let's look at what these all are just again to be transparent about things <clears throat> so you can see here that the one thing it's going to do is it's going to record um, the video from your webcam of you just basically taking your exam. Um, shouldn't, uh, you know, um, I'm not recording your screen or anything like that. I'm just recording the video of you taking the exam. I, you know, I don't care what's in your background or, you know, you know whether you're wearing dirty clothes or you're, little sisters in the background watching her iPad. I don't care about any of that. Um, it's just to set up a kind of a base minimum of um, ensuring that you are taking this quiz and or exam. Then what you can see here is that there are a series of things that it's doing. It's controlling your access to websites and having different tabs open. It's stopping you from um, uh, stopping the exam and then starting it over again, copying and pasting from one website to the, to the exam. It's getting um, stopping your other browser extensions, which could go around this proctoring. And then I'm just giving you a calculator. I'm not asking you for your ID or, or anything like that or to sign a, an integrity agreement. Um, Again, it, I, I'm sorry if this seems intrusive, but um, it's actually 
um, uh, let's see, there was about a, there's almost a 15% average difference in scores between my online sections and my in-person sections. I don't think it's all cheating or anything like that. That's That would mean I'd be thinking very little of you. Um, and, and I don't think that that's the case. Um, rather, I, I think that a, that a part of the difference is just the, um, you know, a, a greater difficulty in controlling um, all the external resources out there. Again, you can use your book during the exam. You can use your notes during the exam, which quite frankly, the in-person sections don't get to do that. Um, but um, I do want to stop things like Quizlet and um, Chegg and other kinds of, um, let's just call them like homework helper sites, that kind of thing. Um, and this is designed to, to, to lessen that. Okay. And then these same settings will then be present on the quizzes as they will be on the exams. Okay. So let's just go back to here to review and assign. And back to assign. Okay, so then you'll see that same proctoring enabled here. Now you'll know that something is in proc being proctored when it says this little symbol in A plus. Dude, I don't know why that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Why would it? Why would you necessarily get an A plus this way? But whatever, that's what they did. I have not made the exams yet, so they're not going to appear here yet. Although I obviously quite quickly need to be making these exams. Okay. Um, what else do I want to say about, um, oh, well, I guess I could just say for the quiz itself, um, these quizzes, um, I tell you what chapters they're going to cover and they're generally going to have about 10 questions. And with that quiz, you're going to see here, let's just look at the policies again, same thing due date, and then you've got a slight extension where you can submit it late, but there is a penalty for submitting it late. Proctoring things are enabled. Now, the way that things are a little bit different is that you do have a time limit. So you've got 45 minutes to do 10 questions. It's about four and a half minutes a question. You do have access to your book and there's no points taken off for using your book. Um, but you do have only one attempt. So you only have one attempt, 45 minutes, um, to take this quiz. And again, you do have the proctoring um, enabled. Um, yeah, I think that that's it um, that I want to cover just from the MH campus um, site. Okay, so I'm going to stop this video here.